Girls have ruined it who have rejected people. What's the worst way someone has taken it? My current girlfriend has a six cut on her left thigh after her ex assaulted her with a knife in an attempt to RP her. As a 4 she yanked out the knife and held it at his throat to force him off her. The FK is serving 7 years in prison. Comma she yanked out the knife and held it at his throat. F King Metal is FCK. I have access to the student files. I know where you live. A few weeks later there were reports of a guy looking into windows around my neighborhood. Thank god he got caught before he escalated to a BND or worse. A guy on a cupid had messaged me a few times. And I told him I wasn't interested. After the third time I asked him not to message me again and he threatened to track me down and anally r pay me. He was also old enough to be my father. So there's that. I was 13 and I basically told this really old dude to screw off while he was stopped at a light shouting shit at me. Light went green. He speeds off. U turns wildly. Then comes speeding back and threatens to shoot me. Then there was this other guy at a concert who didn't take no for answer. He pinned me against the wall and only scurried away because the police crashed the concert at nearly the same moment. The worst one about that was my friends just watching it happen. Doing nothing. My ex-girlfriend rejected a really drunk guy in front of me while we were out at a bar one night. The guy responded by stepping over to me. Grabbing my face. Jamming his tongue in my mouth. And then biting me on the ear hard enough to draw blood. He was grabbed and shown the door really quick. But I was just in complete shock. To make the story weirder. I'm a guy and he was very straight and very drunk. I'm pretty sure he was declaring dominance or something. No clue. He broke into my house and chased me into my bedroom. Then spent 10 minutes shouting through my locked bedroom door that I should come out and have a reasonable conversation with him. Adult to adult. He told me he had considered trying to get me pregnant so I would have to marry him. My ex told me that he wished he had done this when I was drunker when I caught him taking the condom off halfway through SX to try to get me pregnant. The old you're actually a dumb wh ray who I didn't like anyway after he wrote a letter expressing his feelings about me. I politely told him that he showed a lot of courage but that I just wanted to be friends. Worst part, he was my work study partner. I was 19 years old. Looking back I should have contacted my boss who would have done something about the work partnership. I finally managed to dump my emotionally abusive ex for the last time. And a couple weeks later he found out I was staying at my mom's. One night he hid in the bushes in her garden and waited for her to go to bed so he could knock on my window and give me a bag full of presents. Six months later his mom rang me and asked when I was going to put him out of his misery and get back together with him because he was becoming unbearably depressed. It's literally been six months of absolutely no contact. Why the fck are you all still waiting? He called me Rufy Bait and then followed me around campus for a couple months. When I was a nanny, I was walking around with the baby in the pram and we visited a bookshop. A man in there started talking to me. And then asked me out. Very kindly. Keeping my father's advice in mind about being kind when I have to reject men when they ask me out. I said that that was a nice offer. But my boyfriend might not to be too keen on it. His response to that was to lean in and try and kiss me. I told him to get the fck off me. He then exploded with rage and started screaming in my face. I was saved by the bookstore employee. The man stormed out of the shop. I spent the next few hours shaking like a leaf. What a champion. My sister was killed by her husband when she tried to leave him. The bullet didn't kill her instantly and he sat next to me in the IQ crying crocodile tears and telling me what a wh ray she was. The story he gave the police was that she shot herself. She was in a cast to her fingertips from the broken arm he gave her. I have no faith in police. I know many are good people. But not there and not then. Thankfully. He's dead. 2. The world is better off. I was scared it was only a matter of time until he killed someone else. I've got my own stories. But they pale in comparison. 
I also once had a guy send me hundreds of text messages calling me all kinds of names. Cursing me out and threatening me because I didn't have sx with him after our entirely lackluster. First and last. Date. I didn't even bother reading beyond the first 50. Just let him go on and on until I blocked and mass deleted. Still. It was nuts. He spread rumors about me at work that I f ked all the guys there and people believe it. Colon. How does that work? Do all the guys think they were the only ones left out? This is a slightly different take but I turned a guy down for a date and he then posted a long snap story about how much he loves his wife that he had neglected to mention all that time. I turned down a guy that was known for being the popular gooier and I thought he was a bit of a dickhead. When he tried to kiss me I turned my head the other way. Said I wasn't interested and walked off. He grabbed my hand. We went on one date and I declined a second. A couple of days after that he called me and told me what I had been wearing that day. This went on for a couple of months. I'd literally never see him but at least a three times a week he'd know exactly what I wore. By getting nudes from another girl. Cropping her face out. He stopped his car in the middle of an intersection and just kept slamming his fists on the steering wheel. He was 15 at the time. And although the rejection happened over the phone. He was so irate that he illegally drove a car to the nearest place he knew to where my house was. I'd once told him I'll live near the hospital. And waited there demanding I give him more accurate directions to my house. In retrospect. I probably should have been more terrified than I was. This happened to me once. I gave the guy very clear directions to a house in Florida. I do not live in Florida. I'd gone out with a guy once that I'd met through a dating site. And we just didn't click. I told him exactly that. I was very respectful of his feelings and wished him the best. He was not receptive. At all. He called me a wh re. Told me that he was going to find where I lived and push me into oncoming traffic. Really awful things. He wouldn't stop texting me horrible stuff about how I was a gigantic bitch. A total CNT for leading him on. And that he hoped that someone arped me. I blocked his number. Which thankfully stopped the messages. Reported him on the, the dating app. And thankfully never heard from him again. It was legit one of the scariest frigging things. Dude was unhinged. Guy asked me out during an Uber pool ride. I told him I wasn't interested and he started moving closer and asking me why I wasn't interested and what was wrong with him. It was. Uncomfortable to say the least. My Uber driver. For some reason. Thought it was hilarious to see me pressed against the door to try and get away from this random guy invading my personal space. Thankfully no one has threatened my life. If using Uber pool you should be able to rate the passengers as well as the driver. One to both for being a predator and a happy spectator. Chased my car down the major city street as I drove away. Running after me until he collapsed in the road. Called me dozens of times. Eventually blaming everyone from my little brother to my dentist for breaking us up. Then flew to his hometown the next day and committed suicide. His extreme clinginess and jealousy was the reason for my decision to take a break. And though clearly I made the right decision. I felt terribly guilty for years. Edit. Details. Edit 2. It's been 20 plus years. I'm fine and happily married now. Thank you for all the supportive and thoughtful responses. Must have been one hell of a dentist. Recently I passed a homeless man that cat called me without acknowledging him. When I broke up with my, mentally, emotionally, and physically abusive, ex of 4 years. He stabbed himself in the stomach because I wouldn't take him back. Then called me, while apparently sitting in his car bleeding everywhere, and came up with an elaborate story about how he was dragged out of his car and attacked. On a main road. With plenty of light. And a whole bunch of traffic cameras and surveillance cameras from stores. And surprisingly not one caught anything. He ended up driving himself to the hospital and had to get emergency surgery. 
I was called the next day by a detective who told me it was self-inflicted. I immediately cut off all contact with him and any of our shared friends. But still felt guilty for months thinking that I caused someone to seriously injure themselves. Don't know if this even counts because I was in 5th grade. But some acquaintance of mine confessed and when I rejected him he slapped me across the face. Then he started harassing me and my younger brother. Until my best friend, still friends to this day, beat the shitty out of him. That's quite intense for elementary school I. Didn't happen to me. But to a friend of mine. Guy on her floor asked her out by buying her cake and writing a letter. She said no. So he crumpled the letter and ate it. He let her keep the cake though which was nice. You know after reading some of these posts weird as is it this seems like a pretty good reaction at this point. I was spending time with an ex because he insisted he needed the company and we were still on friendly terms. I ended up having to kick him out of my house, he was acting crazy. Keeping me up in non s always. Talking and shti when I told him I needed to sleep and would kick him out if he continued disrupting my rest. He spent the following 3 days sleeping outside of my house and only left to get suitcases of his shti. Which he subsequently left by my back door. He would repeat this routine every few months until I moved. Insisting that he would hold my bike hostage until I stopped being a bitch and let him into my house. Needless to say he never set foot in my home again. I'm pretty sure that what the police are for. Called me an ugly wh ray and said no one would ever want to fck me. He didn't like when I asked how I could both be unf cable and a wh re. I have been called a dyke so many times by guys I turned down. That I briefly questioned my sexuality. He killed a stray cat that he found was taking shelter in his basement. He later told me it was my fault and that I had caused him to do it. I wish he would have just threatened me directly or started some bullshitty rumors. Not kill an innocent animal over it. Threatened to r pay me if I wasn't going to have sx with him willingly. So r pay or r pay then? If you're under duress because of a threat of bodily harm you can't really consent. This thread helps explain why some women have trouble saying no. It's a defense mechanism. So many creeps think women love their come-ons because we smile and laugh before getting the hell away to safety. Women's appreciative reactions are logical and placating. Smiling and being vague instead of saying no lets you extricate yourself without setting off a potentially dangerous situation. In high school I turned a guy down so he went around spreading rumors that he tried to fck me but my vagina was deformed and practically closed up. He spent the rest of the year talking shti about how nasty I was. Unclean. Unshaven etc. Sometime about 5 years ago. He tried to add me on Facebook and I blocked him. FCK that guy. I spent months trying to convince people I knew how to wash my asshole. I had actually heard of a lot of people doing this before but I'd never had it happen to me. And when it did it was completely devastating. He told me I had to go out with him or he would kill himself. He then said goodbye. Very convincingly and emotionally and turned his phone off stopped picking up or answering any texts. I knew him from when we went to high school together and so I actually had his best mates and his dad's phone numbers. I phoned them and sent the screenshots of the messages to them. Absolutely hysterical and worrying that he was in a gutter somewhere. However it was very quickly F King discovered. By his livid father. That he was actually round a mate smoking weed. And he thought that this would at least get him a pity shag. What a complete and utter twat. Edit. Hello. To answer the nationality questions. Most of you were half right. I'm half Australian half English. Comma I have kind of a weird accent from growing up in both countries. I went over to my ex's to get some of my very expensive belongings he still had and he was making advances at me. I rejected him and tried to walk out of his house and he slammed me down on his floor and choked me and then threw my phone at a wall. Thankfully didn't break. He then proceeded to drag me into his bedroom and lock me in there for around 5 hours and the entire time I was screaming and his sister who he lived with did nothing. Eventually a neighbor called the cops. 
He has a false imprisonment charge and an assault charge with a permanent restraining order. I've got two. One. A friend who had feelings for me who I rejected 5 years ago wouldn't stop trying to bring it up nicely to convince me. I stop talking to him but periodically he adds me on Facebook, which I reject. Two weeks ago. He found my Instagram and added me. We haven't talked since I made it very clear that it was a no. He's never been threatening but it's just so frustrating that he keeps trying. 2. My ex tried to booty call me post relationship and I turned him down. He kept texting me after I stopped answering for the next hour. He'd started the attempt by implying I was a SLT. And he got engaged to the girl he was dating when he did this a month later. I went on a terrible date with a coworker. He got wasted and really embarrassed himself and me in front of a lot of people. I share a lot of my life on the internet and I draw the line at going into detail of what happened that night. That is how bad it was. The next day. I gave a different male co-worker a ride home. Which was something that happened every Wednesday. The guy I went out with followed us. Confronted our co-worker and his wife about the affair I was having with him. I wasn't. Pride. And pulled an actual white picket fence out of the neighbor's yard and threw it at the dude. The police were called. It was a whole thing. The best part of the story is that the good co-worker was given a promotion so that he was the direct supervisor of both myself and the jerk. I didn't have to work with the jerk too much longer after that. A friend of mine in college broke up with her boyfriend. He for some reason rented a full body bunny suit as part of a surprise to win her back. She left him crying alone in a bunny costume on his bed. Kind of sad and funny. My sister got followed home by a dude she rejected. He went up to the house and started talking to her kids and telling them he was their new dad. Luckily. Real dad came out. In his police attire. Put a real quick end to that. Edit. Want to clear up some confusion. My sister and the real dad are married. Not divorced or anything. The guy followed her home from the hospital she works at. Where he was a patient under her care. He made a move on her. She said no. There was no relationship between them besides nurse patient. Well maybe not in his eyes. I refer to my brother-in-law as my brother. Mostly cause I'm too lazy to type it out. But also cause he's been in my life since I was a little kid brother was not threatening the man as a cop but instead as a father. He just happened to be getting ready to leave for work at the same time. When I was in the equivalent of 8th grade. This guy a year below me was upset that I was always rejecting him. So one day he cut himself and used his blood to write my name behind the piano in the school chapel. One time on the subway a guy asked me out. It was pretty busy and I was squished up against people. After I rejected him he kind of just stood there awkwardly and then kept asking until his subway stop. It was a pretty bad experience because I couldn't really move anywhere and he continued after me rejecting him. Edit. Some words. So I really liked this guy in high school. He was kind of edgy and I was a pretty good kid. He asked if I wanted to skip school with him and naturally I was all for it. I walked to his house after getting dropped off at school and we watched movies. He eventually turns on PRN while we are kissing making out and tries to put his hand down my pants. I was really nervous because I was a virgin and hadn't even touched a penis or anything. I found my way out of there pretty quickly. I kind of just stopped talking to him, really because I wasn't ready to have sx. Comma and he decides to tell everyone he took my virginity and I was bad in bed. I was mortified. Another student in the back room of my classroom area pinned me against a wall with my arms behind my back. And tried to grope my chest. I was in primary school and 9 years old. He I assume the same age. I fought. Shoved him back and managed to punch him in the face. Despite being a tiny little Asian girl. He swore at me for breaking his nose. Did nowhere near that damage. Which is a shame. And he told the teacher I'd attacked him. I didn't know how to tell an adult someone had tried to molest me. So I got detention. He was a smug asshole in my same class for the next two years. These are the entitled boys that become the men written about here.